Hey everyone, Daz here with another Slider Revolution tutorial video. As you probably know, one of the quickest and easiest ways to get going with Slider Revolution is to start with a new module from a template. Templates make it easy to find something you like the look of that you can customize for yourself. We already have numerous guides to help you customize templates and we'll be making more in the future too, but here we're going to do something a little different. Let's pick a template, such as this image slider template, and instead of customizing the template itself, we're going to make a version of it completely from scratch. We'll duplicate the menu, the social icons, the business title, the slider transition countdown, and basically all the cool functionality that makes this template a great basis for a full screen image sliding website. But instead of newborn photography, we'll go with a fitness business theme. The goal here will be to complete development of the whole project in about an hour or so. To be able to do that, I won't be pausing at any point to overly explain anything in great detail, I'll still describe what I'm doing as I go, but in the interests of showing you just how easily and quickly a full screen image sliding based website can be built with Slider Revolution, I'm going to leave it to you to rewind the video and perhaps slow down YouTube's playback speed if you get lost at any point. Or instead of trying to follow along step by step to start with, you might want to sit back, relax, and think of this video as an opportunity to be a fly on the wall as we build the equivalent of a template from scratch. Start with a new blank module. Start guide. We're making a slider module. We want our site to take up the full screen. Intelligent inheriting to make responsive design as easy as possible and go to the editor. Slide options tab. Set background type to image. Click object library. Pick an image from sliders object library. O for original size. Hover over add layer and add a row. Rename the new layer to middle row. Under row settings, select the first icon for a single column row. Set row position to centered and click update row to update the canvas. Select the middle row layers solitary column, go to the style tab and in the spacings panel, click the padding padlock icon so that typing zero into one field changes all padding settings to zero. Select middle row in the timeline, click the padding padlock, and again, change all padding values to zero. Okay, add a new text layer, then drag it into the middle row layer we just made. Hold the mouse pointer just inside the row, and once the row outline is highlighted blue, drop the text into the row. Content subsection, change the text to read get, and change the layer name to get for easy identification. Change display to inline block, and you'll see the bounding box snap neatly around the text layer. Under the Style tab, set Font Family to Playfair Display. Change text size to 50 pixels with a line height of, say, 70 pixels. In the top middle toolbar, click the duplicate icon to make a copy of our text layer. Rename the new layer to Healthy, content subsection and change the text to read healthy as well. Set display to block to snap the bounding box of our healthy text to the width of the row, which neatly slots it under our get text. Style subsection, change the font of our healthy text to something a little different like caveat. Let's go with a font size of 200 and a line height of around 120. Select the get text layer again, we can adjust its position by adjusting its margins. Start by guessing a top margin value and then adjust it up or down with arrow keys. Maybe 180 pixels for the left margin. Select the healthy text layer and do the same. Start with a top margin of minus 100 and adjust from there. I'm happy with that. In the font and icon panel, click text color. Yellow will work nicely. Select the middle row and adjust its margins to reposition get healthy all at once. Just experiment until you get a position you like. We might push it up a bit by adding 150 pixels to the bottom margin. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's save and preview. 
That's a good start. Close the preview. Okay, add a new row. Rename it to bottom row. We'll use this row to house our slide navigation elements just like in the original template. For it to suit the size of the elements we'll be adding, go to content and change the span of each column in the row to one half, one third, and one sixth. Click update row. Select bottom row and under content, set row position to bottom. If I scroll up on the canvas, you can see our bottom row is now on the bottom. Style subsection. Setting all padding values to zero will make the columns sit flush with the row. The columns still have their own default padding though, which will be fine for the first column where our navigation buttons will go, but the content going in the second and third columns will work better without it. So I'm going to set all padding for column eight and column nine to zero. Okay, let's add a new layer of text. We'll use this for our slide number. Drag it to the second column of the bottom row. Hold it just inside the edge, then let go of the mouse so that it snaps across the whole column like that. Rename the layer to slide number. Content subsection. Change display to inline block. This will make it easier to position the slide number alongside the extra content we'll be adding to the same column later on. We want it to be a dynamic number that changes with each slide. To do that, replace the text button layer content text with a zero. Click Meta. Select Current Slide Index, and you'll see the zero we just put in is updated with a short code. On the canvas, you'll see it as a static 003, but once our design is live, it'll update dynamically with the number of the slide that's being viewed. Style Subsection. Change the slide number's font to Playfair Display. A font size and line height of 60 pixels should work nicely. Okay, let's add another layer of text. This time drag and drop it to the right of the slide number. It should sit neatly right under it. Content subsection. This slide is about getting healthy, so let's add a descriptive blurb about that. Regular exercise strengthens your heart and improves your circulation, lowering the risk of disease. Keep fit stay healthy. Don't forget to change the layer name to something relevant. Description will do. Back to the style subsection. Reduce the font size of the description text just a little. Click text color and reduce its opacity to around 70% to make it a little softer on the eyes. We want the description text to sit to the right of the slide number for that, just play around with the description layer's margin and padding values. Here I'm making a version of an existing template, so I already have a good idea of what values to use. But if I was flying completely blind, I'd just experiment. Mistakes can be undone, or previous saves can be reloaded, so it's really safe to try whatever you want to see what happens. Basically, I just want the text to sit to the right of the slide number for now. Perfect. Now we can select the slide number layer and reposition it too. A top margin of 50 and left padding of about 70 should align it better with the description text. Nice. To make the slide number and description stand out more, select the column they're in, which is column eight. The white marching ant lines show it's selected. Click BG color, set the background color of the column to black, drop opacity to 35%, Looking good. Okay, select the third column in the bottom row, column nine. We want an image in it that a user can click on to go to the next slide in our slideshow. In the background panel, click object. Pick the image you intend to use for the second slide's background. Save. Preview. All right, that's looking pretty good, but we want the bottom row content to stretch across the whole desktop view rather than be confined to the grid area like it is on the canvas. To make that happen, select the bottom row layer. Again, white marching ant lines will show you that you have it selected. Under the layer options tab, click size and position. Set layer align to scene, save and preview. The bottom row now spans across the full viewable area. 
The first column is still empty of content, so you can't see anything on the left of the row yet, but we'll get to that later. All right, hover over slides and click on global layers. Check you're on the global layers timeline, and if so, add a new row. We'll use this row for our top menu, so let's name the layer top menu. Just scroll the canvas down if you need to see the newly added row. Go to the size and position subsection and set layer align to scene so that the row spans the full viewable area, exactly the same way as we did for the bottom row a moment ago. Style subsection. Create some space around the top menu layer. A top margin of 30 with a right and left margin of around 50 pixels should be about right. The margin spacing is visible on the canvas as transparent purple. The transparent blue inside the row tells us there's padding there too. We'll remove it by setting all padding values to zero. The columns in the row still have padding, also visible as transparent blue when you hover over them. Select column 13, which is the first column, then change all padding values for that column to zero. And we'll do the same for the other two columns. Column 14. And column 15. Okay, let's add a business name into the first column, column 13. Add layer, text. Rename the layer to Revolution. Content subsection. Change the text to read Revolution. Drag the layer on the canvas just inside the border of the first column and let it snap in there. Go to the style subsection and change the font family to Playfair Display. Let's try a font size of 47 pixels. Line height of 50. In the top menu, click Duplicate. Rename the duplicated layer to Fitness Studio. Content subsection. Change the text there to Fitness Studio. Style subsection. Change font family to Roboto. Try a smaller font of about 16 pixels. Line height of 30. Click the More button to expand the options available. Set TT Transform Text to uppercase. And to line it up, set letter spacing to 8 pixels. If the two lines of text don't line up, drag the Fitness Studio layer and hold the point of your cursor just inside the bottom boundary of the column to place it neatly under Revolution, and that should do it. Now let's do our menu. Add layer, text, rename the layer to about, content subsection, change the text content to about, drag the about text layer into the second column of the top menu. Changing display to inline block will allow us to stack more menu items along the same line. Back to the style subsection, Change font size to 14, line height to 60, letter spacing to 5, and text transform to uppercase. We want to line it up better with our business name. Adding 10 pixels to the top margin should do that. Back to the content subsection, set text align to centered. All right, go to the middle top menu and duplicate the about menu layer twice. Select the first duplicate, rename the layer to classes, change the text content of the layer to read classes as well. Select the second duplicate and do the same, only we'll change the layer name and text content to read contact instead. To add some space between the menu items, select the classes layer, go to style, and add 35 pixels to both the left and right margins. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's create some social icons. Select the About layer, duplicate it, drag the duplicate About layer into the third column, rename the layer to Facebook, Content subsection, delete all the text content there, click the Icon button and search for Facebook. 
select a Facebook icon to use, back to style, set letter spacing to zero, line height to 50, line it up better by setting the top margin to 13 pixels. Even out the space around it by setting right and left padding to 21 pixels. Border panel and click border color. Let's stick with the same yellow we picked earlier. Set the border style to solid. Set all sides of the border to one pixel. Clicking the padlock makes it much faster to do that. Click the next padlock to quickly change the corner radius of the border to 50 pixels. And now we have a nice circular social icon. Back to the content subsection, down to the display mode in column panel, set float to right to make sure our social icons always stay on the right of our top menu row. Okay, duplicate the Facebook layer twice. Select one of the duplicates and rename it to Instagram. Delete the Facebook class code from the text button layer content panel. Click icon. Search for Instagram. Select that. Style. Scroll down to the spacings panel and change the right and left margins to 15 pixels for some extra space either side. The shape of the Instagram icon isn't quite a circle though. To fix that, reduce its right and left padding to 19 pixels. That looks much better. Select the next duplicate, rename it to YouTube, content, delete the Facebook class code, click icon, search for YouTube, pick an icon then go to style again. Once again we need to reduce the right and left padding values to make the yellow line around it more circular. Eighteen pixels of padding seems about right. Next, let's add an overlay to make the top menu a bit easier to see. Add layer, shape, rename it to overlay. I'm going to collapse the top menu layer to make it easier to drag the overlay layer to the bottom of the layer stack. Size and position subsection. Set the overlay's horizontal alignment to centered. Set vertical alignment to top. Set layer align to scene to span the overlay across the slide's full viewable width. Then change its width to 100%. Height wise we'll go with one third of the viewable area. Go back to style and click BG color. I want the gradient of the overlay to fade off. I want the gradient of the overlay to fade. Select the gradient button to bring up the gradient stop editor. Select the bottom right gradient color stop. Drag the color selected down to black. Select the bottom left gradient color stop and do the same. Now select the top left gradient stop and change its opacity to 50%. Select the top right gradient stop and change its opacity to zero. That's what we want. Close the color selection dialog box, time to save and preview. Thanks to the gradient overlay we just did, the readability of our top menu is improved. All right, let's add some navigation buttons. Add layer, row. The default number of columns in a row is three. Rename the layer to lower row. Content subsection, set row position to bottom. You may need to scroll down your canvas to see that. In the row settings panel, click the first icon to set it to single column. Click update row to apply the change. We now have only one column in our lower row layer. Select the lower row column, column three here, then under style change all padding for the column to zero. Now select the lower row itself and do the same thing. Now we can add our navigation buttons. Add layer, button, 
Rename the button layer to Previous or Preve for short. Pick a button style from the list on the right. Close the list. Drag the new button layer to about here. Content. Replace the button text with Preve. Style subsection. Click more to expand the options there. Set text transform to uppercase. Font size of 15. Set font weight to 400 regular. Letter spacing of five and line height of 45. Scroll down to the border panel and click border color. Yellow again, but this time we'll reduce opacity to zero to make the border invisible unless we interact with it. To set up the interaction, go to the hover subsection. For a traditional hand cursor when hovering, we're going to set cursor type to pointer. Scroll down to the style panel, click on border color, yellow again, click anywhere on the canvas. Our previous button has a nice yellow border, which should only be visible on hover. Reselect the button layer and let's save and preview it in action. The border on our button is only visible when we hover over it, which is perfect. Close that. The lower row layer is for our navigation buttons. Click and hold the previous button layer and drag it into the lower row layer. It should nest neatly under the single column we have there, which is column three. Make sure the previous button layer is selected. Back to the content subsection. Set display to inline block and the bounding box will snap neatly around the button layer. We'll add a next button in a moment, but before that, let's add a divider to separate it from the previous button. Add layer, shape, rename the layer to divider. Drag the divider layer below the preve layer. With the divider layer selected, go back to the content subsection and set display to inline block. Size and position subsection. Set the dividers width to one pixel height to 45, and back to style. BG color, choose the preset yellow again. Click somewhere on the canvas to deselect the layer. We can now see we have a vertical yellow line to divide our previous and next navigation buttons. Let's add our next button now. Select the previous button again, and in the top middle toolbar, click duplicate. Rename the new duplicate layer to next. Go to content, change the text content to read next. Select the lower row layer, style subsection. Adjust margins until you're happy with the position of the buttons. Probably no need to touch the top margin here though. That looks good. Time to save and preview. It would look a lot more seamless if the divider was correctly in line with the edges of the buttons. To fix that, select the divider layer. Change the left margin to minus one pixel. Save and preview again. That's fixed the way the previous button looks, but the next button is still out. Close that. Select the next button layer. Change its left margin to minus one pixel as well. Save and preview. Okay, now that's nice and seamless. Excellent. Let's now create a similar hover effect for our top menu items. Select the about layer. Scroll down to the border panel. Click border color. Yellow and once again set opacity to zero. Set border style to solid, but this time let's do just a single underline as our hover effect. For that, set the border's bottom size to one pixel, but leave the rest at zero. Go to the hover subsection, set cursor to pointer, set animation to enabled, 
scroll down to the style panel and click border color. Preset yellow again. Make sure the bottom border is set to one pixel. Click on the canvas to deselect the about button. Our bottom yellow border is visible as expected. Save and preview it to test the hover effect. Perfect. We can now copy that effect onto our other menu items. To do that, select the About layer, right click, copy, and click on Hover Style. Select the Classes layer, right click, and paste Hover Style. Select the Contact layer, right click, and paste Hover Style again. Save and preview. Our top menu items each have a nice underline on hover now. Nice. Okay, let's create hover animations for our social icons too. Select the Facebook layer, Style Subsection, Background Panel, BG Color, Yellow Preset, and once again set Opacity to 0. Hover Subsection, Set Cursor to Pointer, Animation to Enabled, Scroll down to the style panel, text color, this time choose black. BG color, yellow again. Back to content. Select the Facebook icon, right click and copy hover style. Select the Instagram layer, right click and paste hover style. Same with the YouTube layer. Save, Preview. All three buttons now have a nice hover effect. I think we're ready to start working through our responsive layouts. First up, switch all responsive layout sizes to On. We've been working in desktop view, so let's take a look at our notebook view. There's a few tweaks we need to do here, but not too many. Tablet view. We've got a little bit more to fix up here. And mobile view. Clearly our mobile layout needs the most attention, but we'll leave it till last. Changes we make to the larger layouts will get inherited, which means we'll have less work to do on our mobile layout when we eventually get to it. All right, let's start with notebook view. Make sure you're on global layers. We can see everything in our top menu needs fine tuning. Select all of the social icons by holding command or control on your keyboard as you select them. Set float to right. Style subsection. Increase their font size a little. Hold command or control and select all items in the top menu as well as the previous and next button layers. Size and Position tab, Responsive Behavior panel, Toggle Intelligent Inheriting to Off. This will make it easier to manually set the size and position of each of our selected layers for each responsive viewport. Click Reset All Values from Desktop to reset the size and position of our selected layers to match the settings of our desktop view. Preview that and switch to Notebook view. The most obvious thing is our main menu items need fixing. The rest isn't too bad, really. Click anywhere to deselect everything. Select the About, Classes and Contact layers. Go to the Style subsection and reduce their font size. Scroll down to the Spacings panel. Increase the top margin to 13 pixels to align them a little better. Earlier, we set our social icons to float to the right, the float option should already be set to none for the main menu items too, but it doesn't hurt to check. We might make the previous and next fonts a little smaller. Select them and go to the style subsection. 12 pixels should work nicely. Save. And preview. That's looking pretty good. Close that. 
select the number one new slide. Select the description layer. A little larger font will work better here. Let's try 16 pixels with a line height of 24. Our healthy text maybe should be a bit smaller. Select it on the canvas or in the timeline stack. I think 160 pixels with a line height of 105 should be good. Now select the get layer. Let's reduce that to say 38 pixels with a line height of 53. That pushed it up a little. Scroll down to the spacings panel. Reduce the top margin to minus 95 pixels. That's much better. Save and preview. I'm happy with the way this layout looks so far, but the description and next slide navigation image should really take up less space, so let's do that. Select the description layer. Change left padding to 100 pixels. Select the slide navigation image. Hover subsection. Change cursor to pointer. Set animation to enabled. The animation panel is now visible. This field allows us to scale up how wide the layer will appear when a mouse hovers over it. A value of 1.1 tells slider to scale the image up by 10%. And this one allows us to scale the height on hover. Match the value used in the width field to maintain the image's aspect ratio on hover. You can see the image now kind of bleeds outside of the white marching ant lines. We can easily fix that by toggling the mask option to on. Time to save and preview our changes. Now when we hover over our image it scales by 10% but doesn't go outside of our column thanks to the mask setting. Everything else looks great except our description which is a little hard to read so let's fix that. Back to the desktop view. Select the column our description is in which is column 8. The white marching ant box or dashed white lines whatever you want to call them show the column is selected. Go to the animation subsection. Scroll down to the layer backdrop filter panel. Toggle the Use Filter option to On. Set the amount of blur to 5 pixels. With a slight blur there, our description is now much easier to read. Save and preview. Check Desktop View. Everything's looking pretty good. Back to Notebook View. I'm happy with that. I think we can now move on to fine tuning our tablet layout. Switch canvas view to tablet. Go to slides and select global layers. In the timeline, select the top menu layer. Here we can see our top menu has three rows contained within a single column, which is why our top menu elements all appear stacked on top of one another. To fix that, go to the content subsection. In the row settings panel, the break at tablet icon is highlighted. That tells Slider Revolution to collapse the rows of our top menu into a single column whenever it's viewed at tablet size. Selecting the mobile icon tells Slider to only collapse the top menu into a single column when it's viewed at mobile size. The result of which means our top menu is now back to being displayed with its original three column layout. Okay, select the social media icon and hold command or control on your keyboard to select the other two. In the display mode in column panel, set float to right. Our social icons will now always float to the right in tablet view. This is a pretty good time to save. And preview. Switch to tablet preview. Our social icons are aligned nicely. Still a bit to do with the rest. We'll start by hiding the main menu. Click an empty area to deselect the icons. Select a menu item, then hold command or control on your keyboard and select the other two. Visibility subsection, toggle tablet visibility to off. Normally we'd replace the menu with a hamburger style menu for tablet and mobile layouts, but for simplicity's sake we'll just hide it here. If you'd like to build a hamburger menu instead, I'll leave a link in the description to a guide for doing that. While we're here we may as well toggle menu visibility to off for our mobile view as well. Okay, select the Instagram social media icon, style subsection, scroll down to the spacings panel, Set right and left margins to 10 pixels. That narrows the gap between all three social icons, making them a little more compact for smaller view sizes. Next, select Fitness Studio. Reduce its font size to 15 pixels. 
select Revolution. A font size of 45 should line it up nicely with the Fitness Studio text. Save that. And preview. Yes, I'm happy with the way that looks. It's time to clean up our bottom row. Select the number one new slide again. Select the bottom row and scroll down on the canvas if you need to see the bottom row. The white marching ants show it selected. Content subsection, row settings panel. Just like before, select break at mobile so that the row only collapses into a single column in mobile view. Select the description text layer. Style subsection. Increase the font size to 16 pixels. Line height to 24. We should save and preview to see what that looks like. That looks way too cramped. Our best approach here is to hide something, so let's hide the navigation image. Select the slide navigation image, visibility subsection, toggle both tablet and mobile views to off, save, and preview. I think that's much better. Okay, select the healthy text layer again. Style subsection. Increase font size to 130 pixels with a line height of 90 pixels. Select the get text layer. Let's go with 31 pixels for font size and 38 for line height. Spacings panel. Try a left margin of 120. Maybe a top margin of minus 62. That's good, but I think we should bring the get healthy text down a bit. Select the middle row. Maybe a bottom margin of 50 pixels. Save and we'll preview that. I can see the divider between the previous and next navigation buttons does look a bit off. Intelligent Inheriting has reduced it for smaller screen layouts. So we'll fix that. I'm pretty happy with everything else though. Okay, go to Slides and select Global Layers. Select the Divider layer. Size and Position subsection. Toggle Intelligent Inheriting to off, then click the Reset All Values from Desktop button. Now the length of the divider is the same height as it appears on our desktop and notebook layouts. Switch to Mobile View. The divider looks good there too. Let's fix up the rest, starting with our social icons. We could rearrange them, but I think hiding them is probably the best approach. Select them all. Visibility subsection. Toggle mobile to off. Select the revolution text layer and the fitness studio text layer. Content subsection. Use text align to center them. Select the top menu row. Style subsection. Spacings panel. Let's try 30 pixels for both left and right margins. Fitness Studio isn't quite lined up. Select it and change the right margin to minus 9 pixels. That's much better. Time for a save and a mobile layout preview. Title looks good. The rest needs some work. We'll start by centering our navigation buttons. Select the column that contains them, which is column 3 here. Content subsection. Column settings panel. Set text align to centered. Switch to the number one new slide. Select the description layer. Style subsection. Change the font size to 16 and line height to 24. Scroll down to the Spacings panel. Let's try left padding of 85 pixels and top padding of 0. Select the Slide Number layer. Maybe a font size of 30 pixels. Line height of 35. Okay, now select the healthy text on the canvas to make it easier to find the column it's in on the timeline. Select Column 1. Content Subsection. Set text align to centered. Select the healthy text layer and center that too. I don't think get and healthy are lined up very well. 
Before we fix that, go to the style subsection and increase the healthy text font size. 105 pixels with a line height of 65 should work pretty well. Down to spacings, click the padlock and change all margin values to zero. Now select the get text layer, change its font size to 26 pixels with a line height of 30. A left margin of minus 40 should position it vertically a bit closer to where we want it. Select healthy again, deselect the padlock and change the top margin value to minus 40. Okay, I'm happy with that. Save. And preview. Looks good, but we still need to fix the alignment of the previous and next buttons. Switch to global layers. Select the lower row layer. Changing the bottom margin to 150 should do the trick. Save. Preview. Perfect. Switch to desktop view. That looks good. Notebook view. Good, but with a bit of a gap on the right that we need to deal with. Tablet view. Also a bit of a gap to fill, which we'll do by adding a slide transition countdown later on. And mobile view. Nice. Go back to the canvas and switch to desktop view. I want to add some slide transition animations now. Go to the module general options tab. Add-ons subsection. I want to use the advanced transitions add-on here. This is a fantastic add-on that makes it super easy to add and customize WebGL page transition animations. When you use this, you can create effects that look like they were made in Adobe After Effects or software like that. And it comes included as part of Slider Revolution's license, so there's no reason for any user of Slider Revolution to not take advantage of it. Select it, then click Enable Add-on. You'll see an enabled flag above the add-on's thumbnail. Back to the canvas. Switch to the number one new slide. Go to the Slide Options tab. Animation subsection. Transition Presets panel, click on Advanced. Expand the Motion Effects option. Lots of options here, but I'm going to go with the Motion Blurred Jump animation. Scroll down to the Advanced panel. Increase the duration of the transition from 800 milliseconds to 1300, which is 1.3 seconds. We can preview how it looks directly on the timeline. That looks good, but let's add some more, starting with the Get Healthy text. Select the middle row layer, animation subsection, keyframes panel, select the anim from button for the in animation, advanced panel, set the horizontal scale field for this animation's keyframe to zero, set the vertical scale field to zero as well. The two fields next to this circular arrow with an arrow through it icon allow us to apply rotation to the layer for our selected animation keyframe. If I put a value into the first field of, say, 70 degrees, then our layer will be rotated on its x-axis by 70 degrees as part of its animation. Okay, now select the Anim2 button for our in animation. Change duration to 1300 milliseconds to match the duration of our main slide transition. Easing settings affect how your transitions ease in at the beginning and end, such as making them go slow in the beginning, speeding them up in the middle, and then maybe slowing them down again at the end. Easing settings are really important because they influence the overall feel of the animation. There's lots of choices here, but we'll just go with sign.in out. Click somewhere vacant to deselect and then preview on the timeline. That looks very cool. Okay, let's add even more animation, this time to the elements in our bottom row. Select the bottom row layer. Make sure you're still in the layer option tab and in the animation subsection. Select the Anim From button for your in animation. Scroll down to the advanced panel. Click the three dots next to the Y field and choose the wrapper bottom setting. This setting aligns the top of our animation with the bottom of the row, which allows it to animate up from there. We'll see how that works in a moment. Scroll back up and select the in animations Anim2 button. This time we'll go with a duration of a thousand milliseconds. Again, set easing to sign.in out content subsection, and preview the animation on the timeline. 
You can see how our bottom row content now animates from the bottom up, which is very cool. Select the column that contains the slide number and description so we can animate that too. Animation subsection, and in from for our in animation, advanced panel, select wrapper bottom again for the Y field. Anim2 for our in animation, duration of 800 milliseconds instead of 1000, and this time let's delay the start of the animation until the 200 millisecond mark. Set easing to sign.in out, click content and preview on the timeline. Now our slide number and description have their own independent transition animations. We should do the same with our navigation image. Make sure you're in the animation subsection of the layer options tab. Select the column containing the navigation image, which is column nine in the timeline. Select the anim from keyframe for our in animation. Set Y to wrap a bottom to once again tell slider the top position of this animation frame is the bottom of the row. Select the anim2 button for the in animation, duration of 800, start at 200, easing to sign.in out. Content and preview on the timeline again. Our navigation image now animates in tune with our slide number and description. If you wanted to mix it up, you could easily play around with the starting point of one animation or the other. For example, select column eight, go to animation, then change start to 300 to slightly delay when the slide number and description text come in. Anyway, this is a good time to save and preview if you want to. Now we need to set up our out animation settings. Select the middle row layer, make sure you're in the layer options tabs animation subsection, go to the out animation line and select anim2. We'll go with a duration of 1000 milliseconds. For easing this time, select sign.out. Scroll to the advanced panel and change the layer's width and height scaling to three. Set the scale of rotation on the x-axis to minus 70 degrees. Click content and this time we need to scrub the timeline using the purple flag to preview our out animation. Nice. Okay, select the column containing the get healthy text. Back to the animation subsection, click the out animations anim2 button, Set the duration to 1000. Scroll down to the advanced panel. The first field there with the half moon looking icon controls opacity, set that to one. If we preview by scrubbing the timeline, we can see our get healthy text now animates a little slower with a nice subtle fade out. But I think I wanna slow it down a bit more. Select the get text layer, click the out animations and M2 button, increase duration to 1000, and the same with the healthy text layer. Basically I'm extending the out animation from a third of a second to a full second. Let's do the same with the bottom row so that we keep the out animation duration of all of these elements the same. I also want to match the easing settings so select sign.out. Back to the advanced panel, change the Y field to set the top position of the animation frame to minus 100%. That will make our out animation appear to scroll up and out of the bottom row. Click content and then preview on the timeline. Be aware pressing the play button on the timeline won't preview out animations that happen beyond the wait flag. To preview your out animation signified by these 1000 duration length animation bars, click on the timeline and drag the purple flag past the wait flag and over the out animation bars. That looks good. Now we need to match the duration of the rest of our out animations. Select column eight, animation, click the out animations anim2 button, change duration to 1000, select the slide number and do the same. Now the description, And finally, column nine. 
preview that, I can see the background image for column 9 has disappeared. That's something that can happen from time to time when working on complex stuff in a browser. It's just a browser display issue, the image is still actually there in slider revolution. Now you can save and refresh if it's a bother to you, but right now I'm only adjusting the animation for the column itself, so I'm going to wait and I'll refresh it later if I need to. Alright, select the bottom row layer, click the Out Animations NM2 button, Advanced Panel, select Mask, Toggle Use Masking to On, that'll keep our bottom row animations from being visible outside of the bottom row itself. Now's a good time to add a dark overlay to our slide. Make sure you're in desktop view, and be sure you're on the number one new slide. Add layer, shape, rename the layer to dark overlay, drag it to the bottom of the timeline layer stack, size and position subsection, position and size panel, set layer aligned to scene, set horizontal alignment to centered, vertical alignment to bottom, Change size presets to cover. Nice. Back to the style subsection. BG color. Gradient color type. Select the bottom left gradient color stop and drag the color selector all the way to the bottom. Do the same with the bottom right gradient color stop. Top left gradient color stop. Set opacity to zero. Top right gradient color stop. Opacity to 90%. Close that. Animation subsection. Click the Out Animations NM2 button. Set duration to 1000. And save. You can preview if you like, but at this point we're good to move on and duplicate what we already have to create a couple of extra slides for our slideshow. You should still be in desktop view. Go to Slides. Hover over the number one new slide and click the duplicate icon. Now we have a duplicate of our first slide that we can modify into a second one. Go to the slide options tab, background, object library and choose the image that matches the navigation image on the first slide. We might preview that. Switch to desktop view and we'll wait for a moment to see the transition between slides. Nice. We might wait and watch that again when it transitions back to the first slide. Perfect. Close that. Be sure to save. Now let's add some manual slide transition actions to our buttons. Go back to global layers. Select the next button layer, go to the actions subsection, choose next slide. Close that, select the previous button layer, actions again, this time select previous slide. Go to slides and select the number one new slide. Select the navigation image which is the image in column 9. Actions, next slide. Switch to the number 2 new slide, select the navigation image again, actions, next slide again, select the navigation image again, we want to change it so go to the style subsection, click object, this time pick an image you'd like to use for the background of your third slide. This lady doing yoga will do the trick. OK, save that. And preview. Our navigation image takes us to the next slide, which is good. So does the next button. And the previous button takes us to the previous slide. Make sure you remember to regularly check all the different layouts before moving on with more changes. But I think the site design is really starting to come to life now. For users who don't manually interact with your navigation buttons, it would be really good to display something visual to show them when each slide is about to transition. I'm pretty happy with everything else so far, so next up let's add a slide transition progress bar or countdown timer. 
save if you haven't already. Go back to the number one new slide. Switch to the navigation options tab. In the progress subsection, toggle the progress bar option to on. Let's go with a circle that rotates clockwise. Alignment is at the bottom left corner, but let's add an extra 50 pixels to its X axes and 70 to its Y axes to bring it across and up a little. Change its strength to two pixels. Increase its radius to 20 pixels. Save. And preview. That's working and looks suitable to our design, but we'll have to align it a lot better. Tablet view. Needs aligning here too. Notebook view. Needs aligning here as well. And desktop view. It's not so bad on desktop. Okay, close that and go back to global layers. Go to notebook view. Select lower row or whatever the name is of the layer you have that contains the previous and next buttons. Adjust the left margin to 120 pixels. Bottom margin to 65 pixels and preview. Notebook view. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. Let's watch it count down to a transition. Nice. Tablet view. That's also better. And mobile view. The alignment's out a bit here. I think to save cramping up our design, we might just hide the countdown on this screen size. Select the number one new slide. Go to the navigation options tab. In the progress bar panel, toggle mobile to off. A quick save and let's continue. Back to slide number two. Layer options, content. Select the healthy text layer. Rename it to strong. Change the text to read strong. We need to align our get strong text a bit better. Go back to desktop view, style subsection, select the get text layer. We might try a top margin of minus 20 pixels. Select strong, uh, maybe minus 27 pixels. It's too far to the left. Let's go with the left margin of 220 pixels. Select get again. Let's see. We'll just experiment here. Four thirty pixels it is. Preview that. It's almost there, but I think it might look better if the text on slide two matched the position of the text on slide one a little more closely. Select the strong text again. Let's try a left margin of 120 pixels. Select get. Left margin of 330 and preview. That's much better. They're not in the exact same location, but the positions of get healthy and get strong suit the images that they're on. So let's call that good enough to move on with fine tuning our notebook layout. Notebook view. Change the top margin of our get text to minus 20 pixels. Left margin to, let's see. Two sixty pixels looks good. Quick preview. Switch to notebook. That's looking pretty good. I mean, you can always spend a bit of time fine tuning everything to suit your preference, but for the purposes of this video, everything is working and looking pretty nice. So let's close that and move on to tablet view. So switch to tablet. With get still selected, change the left margin to, let's see. Two hundred pixels. Select strong and change the top margin to using arrow keys to see. Five 
59 pixels seems about right. Left margin of 66 pixels looks good. Preview and switch to tablet view. That's all good for our purposes here. Back to the canvas and change to mobile view. Select the get layer, set left margin to zero, or maybe three pixels. Select strong, top margin of minus 44 pixels, preview that. Switch to mobile view. That's actually not too bad at all. Okay, next we'll select the description layer. Go to content and change the text to something relevant. Weight training builds muscular power and endurance, protects bone health and lowers the risk of injury. Get strong. Save and that's enough of a change for us to duplicate the current slide to create a third slide. Go to slides and next to our second slide, click the duplicate icon. Now we have a third slide for our slideshow, number three new slide. Go to the slide options tab, background, object library, find the image of the lady doing yoga that we used for our slide navigation on slide two. Select original size, switch to desktop view, select the navigation image, which is column nine in the layer stack. Style subsection, object, and since this is the last slide in our slideshow, we'll want our navigation image to match the image we chose for the background of our first slide. Now select the strong text layer, content, change this one to flexible, rename the layer to flexible, select the get text layer, style subsection, spacings panel, Left margin of 320 pixels. That looks good. Switch to notebook view. That looks good enough. Tablet view. Also looks good enough. And mobile view. We could spend a bit of time making finer changes to better position our text. So you can do that if you want to. But to keep this video as short as possible, I think we'll move on to quickly finish up what we've got. For that, select the description layer. Content subsection. Change the text to suit the slide with a blurb about flexibility. Save that. And preview. I think we'll consider our design done there. All we want to do now is check that our different layouts all look good and that our navigation elements are working as intended. Of course, we haven't added any links to our menu items or social icons, but as I demonstrated earlier, when you're ready to do that, just switch to global layers, select the element you want to put a link on, then apply a simple link in exactly the same way that we applied our next slide and previous slide links earlier in the video. And again, if you want to move stuff around, you can tweak and fine tune the position of any element you want using the margins and padding settings, just like we've been doing all the way through. For a little over an hour's work, I think this looks great. All of our elements are working how we want them to. Our different layout sizes are all looking nice and neat. It's all looking pretty great. So let's say we're happy with our design and we want to publish it to make it live. First thing we want to do is give our module a recognizable name. Go to the module general options tab. In the title field, let's call this revolution fitness. Change its alias to revolution-fitness. Press enter to commit the change so that the short code updates with our new alias. Make sure you save. Click back to go back to the dashboard. You can see our module there with the name we just gave it. Okay, let's add a new WordPress page. Give your page a title name. Revolution Fitness Slider Demo. 
click the slider revolution shortcode create a toolbar button, then select the revolution fitness module. A shortcode for our module gets automatically added. In the slider revolution panel on the right, toggle blank template to on. And that's it, we can publish. View the page. And there's our design live in WordPress. Pretty cool. And there you have it. In little over an hour, we've made a great looking fitness themed multi-slide slideshow, complete with animations and transitions, all from scratch. Everything's working nicely too, exactly as intended. What's cool is that we've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with Slider Revolution here. But hopefully by watching this video, you'll have gained a little extra insight into how you too can jump right in and start making something pretty cool to show off on your website. And of course, if you get stuck at any point, don't worry, we've got plenty of videos and written tutorials to help you out. You can start by checking the description of this video for links to all of those. Thanks for watching and enjoy Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now the world's most powerful WordPress builder.